I'm Schiff, the congressman from California, the ranking Democrat on the Intelligence Committee. Uh, very quickly on the stolen memo by Wik WikiLeaks details what we just heard, that Bill Clinton could make upwards of $66 million in paid speeches, other business uh, ventures, if you will. Does that, doesn't that play into that narrative that the Clintons were engaging in what his critics call that pay-to-play? Uh, no, I don't think it does. Uh, what we're talking about there, as far as I can tell, and again, I just have the glimpse that uh, you showed, uh, is money that he was going to make speaking around the country. Uh, that doesn't uh, connote any kind of a promise uh, of the former president to do something or the secretary of state. Uh, but certainly the Trump campaign will use it as it has used these other Russian hacks to its advantage uh, quite gleefully. Uh, but I don't think that's going to change the dynamic of the race. I do have to say this thing, uh, Wolf, is a, it never ceases to amaze me that from that clip you just showed, uh, here we are less than two weeks out and Donald Trump cannot help himself but to be still pushing his hotels. Uh, and you can only imagine that as president this would continue. He would use that office to, to trumpet his business interests around the country. And given that we don't know a lot of what those may be in Russia and other places, that's a frightening prospect. But his aide, his longtime aide, Doug Band, in these uh, stolen WikiLeaks uh, emails uh, from John Podesta, said they were going to raise more funds for the Clinton Foundation through a private consulting group. Uh, through our efforts, he writes, uh, we have brought new donors to the foundation and garnered increased giving from existing donors. Uh, is, there, is there anything awkward there from your perspective? Well, from my perspective, that Bill Clinton would be involved in raising money for the foundation uh, isn't surprising and isn't uh, condemnatory in any way. The key issue is, was there some action taken by the State Department while Secretary Clinton was there that was influenced by people who were contributing to the foundation? Uh, and much as people have looked uh, in the opposition research and among the media, uh, there have never been any indications that the State Department took some action it shouldn't have taken to benefit a donor. And that's the key question. Uh, so I don't really see any direct or uh, critical implication by the fact that uh, the, the author of the foundation, the former president, was raising money for the foundation. You would expect him to do that. Let's talk about uh, Iraq and Syria for a moment. The Defense Secretary, Ash Carter, said today it will be, in his words, a matter of weeks before the U.S. and its allies can move against ISIS uh, in Raqqa, its so-called caliphate capital. Do you think that's realistic? Well, I was struck when uh, I heard the secretary say that. That is a very aggressive schedule uh, because the Defense Department is also saying they're still in the process of identifying who the Arab forces would be that would be involved in the attack of Raqqa. Uh, the Kurds, they have knowledge, uh, are not the right fighting force to go into Raqqa. They can help secure uh, and place a stranglehold in some of the villages around Raqqa. But that seems like a very aggressive timetable, and it concerns me a bit because we saw this play out once before when there were an ambitious uh, schedule for taking Mosul, which initially was going to happen last spring. Uh, so I understand the, the incentive to move quickly uh, as people are fleeing, ISIS people are fleeing Mosul and moving to Raqqa, and people are plotting and planning in Raqqa. Uh, but I don't think you can uh, lead that military effort before it's ready. And there's a lot of work, I think, that still needs to go into preparing those forces. And there's a lot of work to, to, to liberate Mosul right now. That mission is far from complete. Uh, as you also know, uh, James Clapper, the director of the National Intelligence Agency, called the U.S. efforts to try to get North Korea to give up its nuclear weapons, and I'm quoting him now, probably a lost cause. Do you agree? I don't, uh, and I was surprised to, to see the director say that. I have great respect for Director Clapper. I think he's a real straight shooter. But this is not the policy of the administration. It's certainly not my view either. Uh, I don't think that we can uh, in any way uh, suggest that the North Koreans, uh, that their possession of nuclear weapons is somehow inevitable and unchangeable. Uh, that, I think, would pose a real danger not only on the peninsula and to our allies, but it sends a message to other potential proliferators that if you stick to your nuclear guns long enough, the rest of the world would just come to accept it. Uh, so I don't think that's the right view. I don't think that's the right policy. Uh, and I think we need to put pressure, frankly, on China, uh, maybe through the use of secondary sanctions, where we sanction financial institutions, uh, including Chinese banks that uh, continue to finance transactions uh, with North Korea. But also we make it clear to China that uh, if they don't uh, play a more forceful role in constraining their client state, uh, that
We're going to have to increase our military and naval presence in the region. We're going to have to strengthen our missile defenses there, things the Chinese don't want to see but we will need to do to protect ourselves and our allies. As you know, Congressman, there was a massive cyber attack against the United States last Friday that took down huge parts of the Internet. Uh, do you know who was behind it? Uh, I don't know who was behind it. Uh, it doesn't look in character the same as the other attacks we've seen recently that the Russians have been behind. That's not to say there can't be a Russian link, but it's not the same motivation. Obviously, this is not designed to interfere or meddle in our elections. Uh, it has a very different motivation, I would think. Uh, and therefore, it may have very different actors involved. But at this point, I don't think we have a definitive conclusion about who's responsible or why. Uh, the Pentagon announced today that it was halting efforts to recover what are called the reenlistment bonuses that uh, they say were erroneously rewarded to about 17,000 or so members of the California National Guard to reenlist, go serve, go to fight in Iraq, Afghanistan, elsewhere. You represent California. Uh, why did this happen to begin this? This sounds like such an outrage that they went to these men and women who reenlisted volunteered for service in the U.S. military, and all of a sudden they're told you can't have the bonuses, you have to return all the money with interest. In the meantime, if you can't, your credit rating is going to suffer. This sounds so outrageous. Uh, it is outrageous. It's really quite unimaginable. Uh, and the closest uh, I can think of of any other example is when we learned that they were charging recovering uh, soldiers, Marines, airmen, and others at Walter Reed Hospital for the food they were eating while they were recuperating uh, is, I think, equally outrageous. Uh, and we have to put a stop to it. I'm glad to see the Pentagon issue a statement uh, calling for a halt. But we have to go beyond that. Anyone who has repaid these bonuses ought to be uh, reimbursed completely along with interest, in my view. Uh, we ought to forgive any of these debts. Uh, what happened here is you apparently had people who were recruiting managers that were offering incentives that they weren't authorized to offer. One has already gone to jail for that. But it looks like a broader problem than just California. It looks like other states were also impl implemented or Im implicated. Uh, and so I, there's a systemic issue here that I think we ought to have oversight hearings on. But first and foremost, when we come back in the session, I'd like to see a provision in the defense bill uh, retiring these debts. Uh, if there's reason to believe that a particular soldier was knowingly involved uh, in a fraud, that's one thing. But to tar all the service members who did their duty, I think, is unconscionable. It certainly is. Uh, and they've got to find a way to make sure that their credit ratings don't suffer. Because a lot of these young men and women who did uh, re-enlist, uh, they've had trouble getting loans because they couldn't repay the government with interest for what they thought were bonuses to re-enlist in the middle. It is totally outrageous. You've got to learn, Congressman, what happened here and fix it so it doesn't happen again. Thanks very much for joining us.